Hi there. Uh, this is a picture of the Fukushima uh, nuclear particle uh, dispersion in the Pacific. It's a little bit alarming. I use it uh, for another purpose. Uh, what, what is important to note about Fukushima is that it keeps on polluting. Uh, it's not stopping. It's a disaster that's ongoing. And it's much bigger than, uh, than any other disaster we've seen. Uh, but uh, it's, it's all about the media drawing attention to it. And it's all about uh, a criminal uh, class of nuclear power. Uh, uh, well, companies and, and whoever is behind that, the push for nuclear power. Uh, that is basically forced upon Japan and forced upon the world. But uh, I want to talk about the OB-1 uh, project, Ocean Biomass Island 1. Uh, I had a response to it. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody, if you listen to these videos or watch them. Um, I want to talk a little bit about how I think that you would set this up. Uh, the, the, to explain a little bit, the primary idea is that you grow biomass uh, on the ocean, on floating rafts made of biomass. So you take bamboo, you grow bamboo, uh, you make an island of bamboo, uh, and then you grow bamboo on that island, and that basically allows you to extend the size of the island. And if you do that in areas, in, in places where the ocean uh, doesn't really uh, take drag you away from, from it, so there's some Pacific gyre and there's uh, other places where the ocean is churning around, it's not going in one direction, but it's circular, you will stay there, and your island will stay there, and you can expand the island and you can uh, can grow a lot of biomass uh, continuously because you have all the things that are necessary. You have the water, you have the sunlight, you have the nutrients, uh, and you have the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Uh, so you're basically set uh, to to do that. Uh, it it is uh, I've I've looked into this for a long time now, uh, growing biomass in the ocean, and uh, and it's an old idea. There's a movie called uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Soil and Green. Uh, based on a book called uh, Make Room, Make Room, and it's about uh, the ocean heat, uh, the planet heating up uh, due to greenhouse gases, uh, the ocean dying, and the people starving and being cannibalistic. Uh, that process is on the way. Uh, so the ocean, the, the, the global warming is a fact. Everybody knows that uh, the oceans are dying. They're becoming more acidic, and they're going to release their gases if they, uh, they say there's lots of dissolved gases in the ocean. Uh, that will accelerate the global warming even more, um, but they're not dead yet. So the oceans will die if we don't do anything, and they, they are not dead yet. There's a couple of decades in which the acidity of the ocean still allows us to grow biomass, like seaweed, plants, all that stuff. But we need to do it. We need to go out there. Conserving the ocean is not enough. Conserving nature doesn't help it. It doesn't counter climate change, it doesn't counter uh, the, the carbon dioxide uh, in the atmosphere if you simply conserve stuff. It's not enough. You have to be active, you have to uh, basically promote and foster and, and accelerate life. And there's something else that needs to be said about that, and that is you cannot do that in a commercial fashion. It's simply not going to work. Why? Because every company is embedded in a credit uh, relationship with a banking system the credit is to you to get the fossil fuels to run the company. Uh, it cannot be renewables because you will own them as a company and you don't have to have credit. But, uh, but that's a limiting factor. Uh, fossil fuel uh, supply is, uh, is dropping. Uh, people, the companies are trying to transition to gas, which is a very dangerous thing. Uh, but it's a limiting factor. There's, there's so little fossil fuel and there's so much solar and wind energy uh, the relationship, the ratio uh, of all the fossil fuel reserves is about one compared to uh, 1000 or 1400 for solar every year on land. And if you then take uh, solar power that can be harvested on the ocean as well, you get about 3000 times as much every year as we have fossil fuel in total. So we can, uh, if we tap into that energy and we simply build up projects that are not based on fossil fuels, that are not dependent on fossil fuels, but are solely based on renewables, uh, the growth of those projects can be uh, exponential and enormous. And those projects can bring, bring uh, much more wealth to much more people than any fossil fuel uh, economical marketplace uh, project ever will. It's just hopeless. Um, 
So this project has to be uh, financed uh, uh, in the beginning directly as an expenditure, something that you, you money that you spend. Uh, and I think the best reward for spending that money on this project is to have access to the land that you create. So if you create a floating biomass island and you grow food on it, and you grow fish under it, and you grow seaweed next to it, and bamboo on it, and you expand it, and you use it to capture carbon, and you you get all these uh, processes going in a way that you're do you're not aiming to sell anything to the economy. You don't not trying to do that at all, uh, and you want some reward and access then access to that to that uh, to that land to that country basically. I think is the best reward. So you basically one of the approaches that I've been thinking about is to to sell uh, parts uh, of ownership of the Obi Wan Island. Of course, with conditions that you can never sell it. You own it. You have access to the island, uh, and and that's it. Uh, that's 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 how I think that the financing could be realized. Uh, but of course, there has to be. A reality to the project in order to it not becoming some kind of uh, uh, holiday home uh, scheme, uh, which I definitely don't want to uh, want it to be. But you need to start somewhere. So what what would be the the way to do it? First is that you uh, of course think through the design of the whole thing uh, with experts, and you you think through the needs biologically with experts and I've contacted a number of people uh, expert in bamboo so to ask if it's actually possible to grow bamboo on uh, be, let's say close to saline water and yes it is uh, possible uh, I've investigated uh, the resources about uh, how what's the nutrients in the ocean where do they come from how do you get them up what's the effect if you pump up the nutrients and though those things have been investigated of course because everybody knows <coughs> in the scientific community oceanographers and all that stuff they know about the nutrients in the ocean and they, they, they study that cycle <coughs> there's really a lot uh, that, that that I probably don't know uh, and that still uh, I could still find out but I think I know enough to to trust that this concept is viable uh, mangroves uh, bamboo and other types of reeds and fast-growing organic material can 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 float, and uh, so then the next question is how do you set up this type of uh, island? I'd say you have to start with a pretty big uh, starting point. So uh, you are talking about well uh, a number of acres uh, or hectares of bamboo island, and then you grow from there. If you cannot grow bamboo on your first uh, let's say 10 acres of, uh, of of bamboo island, then the whole project is is doomed to fail. So that's basically the first step you have to take. How you get uh, 10 acres or uh, of bamboo island? Well, you have to grow it on some coast somewhere, and then feed it towards uh, the ocean. And you want to feed it towards an ocean that has a gyre or gyrus, uh, a circular flow somewhere. It's funny, uh, this picture is probably the air dispersal and not uh, the ocean oceanic dispersal because that would of course follow those diary. I've seen another picture that does, that is like it's all curly, but this is uh, something else. Um, so then you have, a st you have a starting point and then you have to let's say, be orga organized about it. Um, there's lots of questions about this. What what's the impact of wind on these islands? How do you keep them from uh, from from pushing together? Uh, will a storm uh, break it up? Uh, what's the effect on the water? Because of course, let's say a possibly possibly positive effect of these islands is that they uh, they will sh create shadow on the oceans. That's for one, and they will create a low carbon dioxide atmosphere above it. Uh, for a second, because of course the bamboo is taking all the carbon dioxide to grow. Um, you know how how structurally what's the structural integrity of these islands? Um, the approach that is now taken to floating islands is that you make them of, out of concrete, uh, which is also an option. But of course, you are talking about huge 
carbon dioxide emissions and a huge dependent on the fossil fuel uh, industry and financing uh, to get uh, yourself uh, the, the, the let's say the raw materials to make concrete you have to have lots of logistics you have to have credit for banks and, uh, let's say that's just a normal economic process so that's never going to work that's never going to be definitive it doesn't really mean that that you cannot have concrete uh, elements or uh, like that in this project um, but they have to be, uh, let's say, uh, uh, purchased by by individual trades. Um, the the best way to go is to, I think, have units, island units uh, that have uh, a special purpose. So you have, uh, okay, unit for growing bamboo, and then you try to figure out what the exact size has to be to uh, to be pretty much secure uh, if it's on the outside of the island. Uh, so let's say one acre strips of bamboo islands uh, uh, or hectare, so maybe maybe better because the acre is smaller I believe. Hectare is 100 meters by 100 meters. To grow bamboo, that's one. Uh, to grow fish, so that's a fish farm. That's not uh, uh, actually surface, but that's actually a rafting with netting uh, that you can keep fish in. Uh, to grow uh, seaweed, which is rafting with wires that you grow seaweed between, those can be pretty big. Um, for uh, for agriculture, so that's to grow, not bamboo, but grain, uh, mice, whatever you want to eat, vegetables, uh, as a water processing uh, island. So one hectare, 100 by 100 meters, to have uh, fresh water. Uh, which you can achieve with uh, by simply cooling the air, getting the condensation. Uh, you can uh, get a pure, like quite a lot of water out of the air every day. Uh, I'm talking about 6,000 liters or something like that. Usable, useful amounts of water without uh, having lots of reverse of osmosis and expensive stuff. You have to have a wind turbine or a windmill for that, so you can have a vertical wind turbine, which you also could use to to, uh, to pump up the water from the deep ocean for the nutrients, um, which you have to feed to the seaweed, which you then the seaweed you feed to the, to the to the to the uh, to the bamboo to the land. So that's so water water uh, desalination, uh, living quarter islands. Uh, Pyrolyzation, which is a process of burning without oxygen, by which you basically create uh, pure carbon and methane, for instance, or gases. And the gases you can burn in engines and motors to do whatever you want, uh, whatever you need. So maybe you want to have, I don't know, some kind of processing plant, uh, a chemical plant. Uh, you can do that all with the gas that you generate from the biomass that you grow on these islands. Uh, and you can then dump the coal uh, into the ocean. Of course, you have to do that in a way that uh, that it becomes unaccessible for a long time. Um, so, and and maybe other chemical processing plants, because yeah, there there is a potential for uh, lots of beneficial uh, uh, nutrients and and food and items. Uh, you have to keep yourself alive. Maybe you want to have a recreational zone. But, but of course the, the core of the whole thing is that a large percentage of it, if not the most of it, is biomass growing, uh, uh, so bamboo, uh, which is then uh, uh, turned into either char coal for dumping or uh, into, uh, into uh, more island. And that's uh, basically, and, and, and the way to start it could, could be that, of course, you, you, you start somewhere with a couple of uh, hectares of island, but you can start in, s in several places doing that, uh, with by several groups. Uh, and, and if you do it like that, uh, uh, then you will uh, have a more robust organization. So you start in North America, in South America, in Australia, in the Philippines, in Africa, on, on the other coast, Morocco, uh, uh, South Africa, in South America, everywhere you start this process with, uh, well, in a coordinated fashion, uh, with uh, the same type of, uh, well, you ex exchange your knowledge, and the only rule is that uh, the, the, the people that pay into it are the participants, and, and the whole thing is not for economical exploitation. 
the, the problem with that is of course uh, that it, there's always corruption and, and even the most noble organizations cannot resist the fact that people grow old and are replaced so you have to have some kind of uh, well uh, almost uh, you have a very selective process in who you uh, allow to be in charge or you simply say well uh, there's there's nobody in charge but we have a rule book and the rule book can never change um, sounds a little bit like a religion uh, well it does because that's why religions are so stable because they always point to the rule book and nobody has the authority to change the rules uh, at least until you become a Roman Catholic or some other kind of religion and you start doing that and exploiting uh, whatever uh, crazy ideas you've given people in this case uh, so but that's that's a whole different chapter there's a whole world world of people talking about seasteading and I really uh, uh, don't like uh, let's say the, the concepts of that it's all but it, it might not be organic so so what happens is that somebody talks about living on the ocean somebody uh, with uh, let's say an economical mindset with a pro-carbon fossil fuel mindset uh, uh, stands up wakes up and say oh wait, wait a minute if you are going to live living on, on the ocean you're gonna have uh, plenty of fish and food and you can make everything work there let's not have that let's make sure that you are wanting to use high-tech high technology uh, you want to have concrete islands, huge islands, and, and, and we'll make a huge product out of it. And, and if you do, now, so let's say the way it works, of course, if a credit uh, uh, extending uh, organization like a bank uh, can make a story about a, an island that will cost $5 billion to build, then of course that whole concept will, will uh, justify being involved and will justify, uh, for instance, a pilot study that costs $15 million to build that island uh, because well they simply give themselves the money that's what banks do and that 15 million project then ends up uh, with a, a product a result that says well seasteading is, is possible but it is usually expensive and they basically taken over the whole conversation that's what you see happening with with many renewable energy products as well so you have a inflatable concentrated solar power uh, panel uh, that has been invented, uh, let's say, uh, eight years ago. I myself have also built an inflatable mirror that will become uh, parabolic because you inflate it, and, uh, and or it's not parabolic but, but spherical because the air pressure simply makes the mirror spherical. But that concentrated light can concentrate light uh, onto a little solar panel, and the solar panel is of course very cheap, uh, and the production of energy is very high, and, and the material cost is very low because you use uh, vinyl or some kind of plastic. That's a brilliant product that everybody could be using today if it were not for uh, well, the carbon interested banks that invested in it and make it very expensive and, and it's really extremely slow. Um, I've, I've written about, so basically my background is writing about these type of inventions for about six years now and I really think that, uh, that, that understanding that the economy as we know it is pro-carbon, pro-fossil fuels and that we therefore have to make a distance between ourselves and the banks in order to solve the cl climate problem uh, that's, that's basically one of the most important results anyway this video is way too long 18 minutes 40 seconds or something like that uh, if you find this, uh, this thinking interesting uh, and want to actually support it uh, then uh, well, uh, give me a, send me an email and uh, <coughs> and donate something. Check out the website. I have also a, a website called Climate Babes where I do promotion of renewable energy, where it makes much more sense to donate. So if you're in renewable energy, you sell solar panels or something like that, you can uh, give a little bit of money, and we make pictures that give uh, solar, wind energy, and all that stuff uh, a positive image. Um, but uh, thanks for listening, and I hope you uh, you like it.